Hi, my name is Pile Mushili and I'm an industrial hygiene student at the University of Minnesota. This video is an illustration of how to use a dust track particle counter. I'm using dust track DRX model 8533. It is a real-time instrument used to measure aerosol contaminants such as dust, fume, mold and mists. It can be used in many industrial and occupational hygiene settings. In this illustration, I'm measuring particles generated from pouring of cat litter. First, I place the instrument in close proximity to the particles of interest. This is called particle detectable range. Turn on the instrument and press start. Doing this prompts the instrument to automatically run on survey mode. Survey mode runs for about 10 to, 10 to 60 seconds, but there is no real recording of the data. It is important not to skip this step because it helps warm up the instrument. Also, it can help clean up residue left over from previous measurements. Once survey mode is completed, press stop to start taking measurements. We will be changing the run mode for this particular sampling. For our run mode, we'll be using manual mode so that we can input our preferred settings. In this illustration, I will be sampling for 10 minutes, 5 minutes for taking sample background measurements and 5 minutes to, to take measurements upon pouring of the cat litter. As you can see on the screen, there is a test length, a log interval and a time constant. Test length is the total time that you'll be using for sampling. Log interval is the time between adjacent sample measurements and time constant is the time across which the data will be averaged. Once those are done, you can hit start to start taking the measurements. One of the benefits of using a dust track is that it provides real-time aerosol mass readings while also separating data into different mass concentration fractions. As you can see on the top right corner of the instrument, it is showing mass fractions for PM 1.0, PM 2.5, the respirable fraction, and PM 10. And as the instrument runs, these different concentrations are also displayed on the monitor. I will be running my baseline again for five minutes. So the instrument will be running and uh, for the sake of time, I will be fast, fast forwarding and showing you uh, measurements just before I take, just before I pour the cat litter. I am now nearing my five minute mark for which I'll start pouring the cat litter. As you can see that baseline, the concentrations are fairly constant and that will start changing once I pour the cat litter. With five minutes, we pour the cat litter into the bucket and dust is being generated from this action. As dust is being generated, the instrument is picking uh, and measuring dust particles and recording the data on our monitor. And like I said, the mass concentration is going to be constantly changing as the different particles are being generated. You can see our, ma our total mass concentration is changing in our different uh, mass fractions. So for the sake of time, I'm going to jump on to the eight minute mark to see what is happening. We are at eight minutes uh, and the mass concentration, the total mass concentration is all still changing, but it's slightly lower now that the particles being generated are not as much uh, now that we've done with the action of pouring the cat litter. And I will jump to the end of the 10 minute mark. I am now nearing my 10th minute mark the instrument, because I set it up so, will automatically stop. That means all my measurements have been taken. And now I will go ahead and just craft the data to see if it's what I expected. 
I started taking measurements at around 14.48. The monitor here displays uh, the data backwards. So on my right is at 14.48. And as you can see, at five minutes, then we have that fluctuation happening. And this is when I started pouring the cat litter and we have the fluctuation of measurements being taken. And now that it's been done, it's what I actually expected. I'll go ahead, turn off the instrument and my data is automatically saved. Now I'll be downloading the data from the instrument into my computer. To do this, I need the TSI software. It's already installed on my computer, so I will go ahead and open it. The instrument is also connected to the computer at this point. Then I'll go ahead and click File, Receive. What is happening right now is that the instrument is communicating with the software and the software is extracting the data. So the data has been extracted and I'll go ahead and select the data that I want. It is displayed by date. I know the date and time for which I did this. So I will just select that particular file and receive it. It says it is 600 samples, which sounds about right because I recorded for 10 minutes at uh, each second. So this is what I actually expect. Once this is done, I will go ahead and close. I also want to visualize my data, so I will go and select a test data report. The data report just displays all my data as it is. It shows the date, the time, the different mass concentrations and all the different time points. Within the software, you can also craft your data. Uh, there's a shortcut for this, and you can also find it on a tab next to file. I am going to rename my craft, select the data that I want to craft. And here is how the crafts look. So each mass concentration fraction is displayed using a different color. So there's crafts for PM1, PM2.5, respirable fraction, PM10, and total mass fraction. Once I'm done visualizing my data, I would also like to export this data as a CSV file. So this is so I can import it into different softwares to analyze it. So I'm going to go ahead, file, export, select my test data and then I will save it. In this case, I'm saving it on my desktop and I'm naming it. This is important because to analyze the data, one may choose to different to use different software such as SAS, R or SQL. And when you have a CSV file, that becomes easier. So I'm going ahead and exporting this data. And once this is done, I can now exit the software. Now I will be importing my data into an Excel spreadsheet. And to do this, I'll open up Excel, file, import from text. Then I will click the data that I want. It is a text file, so I'll open it up and import it. The an import wizard will open up. One of the things that I like doing is selecting where to import the data from. This is because when the data is being downloaded from the software, it has some information that you may not necessarily need for Excel. So I went ahead and I scrolled down and I know that I want to just import the data from line 27 and ignore everything else. So that is what I'm going to do. The wizard will prompt me for next steps. So I want a comma separated file. And this is what I have now and that's what I will down what I'll open. So the data is now being displayed on Excel. I have the date, the time, and the different mass concentration fractions. I also just like scrolling down. I know that I have 600 time points, and so that's what I am going to do to make sure I have all my data points.
The main reason why we download data into Excel is really for different graphing uh, purposes. So I'm just going to go ahead and just show a simple XY spotter plot that you can show from this data. So I went ahead and I highlighted the data that I wanted and I selected an XY scatter plot. And this is how Excel automatically generates the data, but it doesn't look how I want it to look. So I'm going to go ahead and change the scale to log scale, which is what I did. And so this is how the data looks on log scale. As you can see, the different mass fractions are also color coded in different graphs. We, we can really see PM 1.0, but we can clearly see the other different fractions. Once you have your, your chart and your graph on Excel, you can now go ahead and edit it as you wish. You can change your chart title, your axis labels. You can also go ahead and maybe delete one of the mass concentration fraction if that's you just want a visualized one so there are different options to do once the data is on excel and that is how you export your data into an excel spreadsheet